New MMORPG releases are always so exciting because you never know if this is going to be the game that will finally beat World of Warcraft and dethrone the king, but then you always get disappointed. With so many coming out this year attempting to make it in one of the hardest gaming genres where most games usually fail, I condensed the newest MMOs in 2022 with the most potential, in my opinion, into a top 10 list that can provide anyone a good experience. As you don't want to waste your time on multiple MMOs, this video will narrow down your option as we'll be going over their uniqueness, features, and a brief overview, hopefully assisting you in your choosing. By the way, I'm Matthew, also by Mazarine. If you enjoy the video and are new, consider subscribing and liking as it does help me immensely. Thank you, and let's get into it. And number 10, Bitcraft. This is a large scale open world sandbox MMORPG set to release by a small indie company in late 2022 to early 2023. With a very unique concept never before seen, a societal based MMO, where the focus is on players being social and working together to develop their own world and create their own adventure with the elements of the game, without the developers creating a pre designed copious amount of content for them. Essentially, like a Minecraft survival, create your story type game that is very community driven and cannot function without an active alive player base. The emphasis of this game is to explore the huge diverse world while developing your skills of building, crafting and many more and also trying to survive in the dangerous wilds with hidden secrets to uncover. This is a very beautiful game to look at. I'm very excited to see how this type of MMO does in the genre as it has high potential to change how future MMOs are designed where players create the content and carve their own path. In Number 9, Chrono Odyssey. It's considered a next generation MMORPG as it's been in development since 2019, but got delayed because of the you know what. Now set to release sometime in late 2022 to early 2023, and it's going to be available on PC, PS4, Xbox One, PS5, and iOS. Pretty much any system you have can probably play this game. There's very little information out there about this MMO, but from what we know, it's supposed to be a space time themed experience experience with a very high emphasis on PvP content, promising huge realm battles and an action targeting combat system. Definitely the biggest unknown on this list considering that the only real concrete content out there is a gameplay trailer which looks absolutely amazing and I can definitely consider next gen type quality. If the rest of the game can follow suit with this type of quality, this will be one heck of an experience to play that a lot of people will jump on. In terms of longevity, if they can release consistent content that is good, this game will have a very long future. And I'm excited to see what happens. And number eight, Fractured Online is an open world sandbox MMORPG set to release in the winter of 2022. As of right now, it's in closed beta. According to the game itself, this is a mix between action combat and fully interactable environments, having a top down view, click to attack slash action targeting combat with a very significant emphasis on crafting as this is supposed to be a skill based game rather than your gear and leveling have a significant impact on the enemies you face. Definitely a unique approach that you really don't see with many MMORPGs that could work if executed properly. One of the major elements within Fractured Online is that the three races you get to choose between, which each give you completely different play and experiences. The Beastman is a peaceful experience consisting only of PvE content of like building communities and fighting monsters. The human race can be good or bad, consisting of optional PvE or PvP content with law breaking consequences as if you break the law in your society you will be punished. The demon race is suited best for hardcore PvP players where you are completely solo and it's a killed or be killed playstyle where people can actually steal your loot if you lose. Fractured Online is a horizontal progression based game where as soon as you start, you pretty much are in the end game, unlocking new abilities and skills as you work on your various crafting skills or you go to fight mobs and other players while cultivating your settlement. A very unconventional type of MMO that has the potential to succeed if the developers execute the game properly and make it fun overall. And number 7, Justice Online, sick name by the way, is a very popular Chinese MMO funded by the billion dollar company NetEase that came out in 2018 has been thriving for years in China. It is now set to come out globally in late 2022. This game has the potential to shake the entire MMO landscape and succeed in the West just like Lost Ark. With its very unique Chinese inspired theme and setting, it will definitely stand out in the Western world compared to all the other fantasy based games. 
Justice Online takes place in a massive fleshed out detailed world with very diverse and stunning to look at zones, story driven narrative that is fully voice acted with cutscenes immersing you really deep within this game. Multiple classes for you to play and one of the most detailed character customizations I've ever seen. You can really spend a whole day just creating your character. The combat is Wuxit theme being a combination of action targeting and tab targeting. Really high quality combat based on the footage I've seen so far. Lots of unique abilities per class, good looking animations able to dodge in any direction, amazing mobility of gliding and, gl and jumping. Definitely a highlight of the game. And also various end game PvE raids, dungeons, and PvP to partake in. This MMO is the complete package that will be free to play with in-game purchases. Since the game is in Chinese, it's very hard to find a lot of info, so expect more to come later in the year closer to release. And number six, Zenith The Last City is a VR MMORPG, playable on the Oculus Rift. Expected to come out in late 2022, right now it's in early access slash beta, a buy once and play model. This is the most standout game on this list. VR games have a very high potential as the immersion is brought to a whole different level. People already play MMOs to be in their own world. Imagine if you can actually physically go into this world and experience it and move around within it. You're going to be able to do the typical things like create your character, pick your class, which is consists of a blade master, melee class, and a ranged sorcerer, and one that's going to come out when the game is released. All these classes have different versions that follow the holy trinity of tank, healer, and DPS. The combat is decent with various abilities to use but nothing really groundbreaking but the perk is you get to physically fight I'm gonna elevate it that much more the world of Zenith is massive having an anime aesthetic as it takes inspiration from Sword Art Online, the one of the worst and best animes depending on who you ask. Of course, with this game, there's going to be dungeons and raids and other PvP modes to take part in, which is just going to be enhanced by the VR experience. Even if Zenith is decent and not spectacular, the VR aspect will carry it far as there's really barely any VR MMOs out there, and I expect more to come in the future. In number 5, Temtem is a buy to play Pokemon inspired MMORPG set to release in September 2022 for PC, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X. Right now it's in early access, pretty much it's a Nintendo MMO, a Pokemon MMO but not really Pokemon. You're going to be able to explore a large open world filled with many archipelago biomes filled with snow, forests, rock, and many more. You will traverse these areas on foot, ground slash water mounts, and using tools to climb walls and jump big gaps. Overall, this is a very good looking game. Temtem is very similar to Pokemon with a few adjustments and also it being an MMO. As you're able to capture Temtem, picking one of three at the start of your journey. A major aspect of this game is of course capturing Temtem of various types and training and evolving them to complete your team of six. You will partake in turn-based combat where you battle trainers and players in 2v2 battles while following a decent story of facing your rival occasionally and taking down the big bad criminal organization trying to take over the world and also completing dojos aka gyms in various areas and then the end game will be pve and pvp activities in groups of players or solo if you're looking for an rpg mmo that's a pokemon type experience with an ever updating content then temtem is a very good option and number four blue protocol is an anime themed mmorpg predicted to release globally late 2022 to early 2023, being developed by Bandai Namco, a very famous company you may recognize as they literally design all of the popular anime games. This is a story-driven experience with voice acting and comprehensive plots for you to take part of while watching cutscenes of anime quality in a diverse instance world with large beautiful design zones and enemies that are top tier quality, potentially the best I've ever seen in an MMO. The classes you're able to play are based on the weapons you have currently there are five playable classes so you can be all of those on one character and they all follow the holy trinity with an action targeting combat system good looking animations and dodge movement mechanics blue protocol is a very pve oriented experience with six player dungeons 20 man raids and multiple world bosses and wave style pve arenas and pvp arenas you can take part in this is a very complete mmo experience with gear progression being crafting based where you make every single piece to enhance your 
character. I see immense potential with this game when it comes out. If they're able to continually release good, consistent content, it will definitely be one of the most popular to play. And number three, Throne and Liberty, is the MMORPG considered by many content creators to be the next big one set to release in late 2022 to early 2023. That has been in development for over a decade as it was initially meant to be the follow-up sequel to Lineage, a 1998 old school MMO. But over the years, this game has been called many names and has pivoted and redesigned itself multiple times to this new iteration throne and liberty which has very little information about it other than a gameplay cinematic which makes you wonder why is everyone hyping up this game and i think this is because a lot of people are looking for the next game that will save the genre and anything that looks remotely good just gets hyped to an extreme amount but based on what's been shown it has an action targeting combat system that looks extremely clean animations are really well designed movement seems to be a big factor in this game as you're able to vault over obstacles grapple to different wall rocks there's a lot of fluidity in mmo that will just make it better overall and a minimal ui which i love the world itself looks very diverse with multiple biomes lots to explore and bosses being fought in massive groups so pve content is a big thing and large-scale pvp between players so pvp is also a big thing throne in liberty reminds me a lot of black desert online mixed with elden ring hopefully this comes out soon as the hype is insane but they don't have a good track record as it's been in development for over a decade so we'll see what happens and number two, Wrath of the Lich King Classic is an old version of World of Warcraft originally released in 2008 and is the most popular expansion WoW has ever released in their history. It's set to come out in September 26, 2022. You'll be journeying to a frozen wasteland known as Northrend to fight undead armies and bosses that are trying to turn you into them in your pursuit of defeating the big bad boss on the cover of the Lich King, who is trying to turn the entire world into undead. This iteration features 10 different classes you can play between with all with unique playstyles and three advanced versions within the class offering you different abilities and passives to enhance your gameplay as well 10 races of unique abilities to pair up with those classes Wrath classic has a high emphasis on the rpg element of the mmo where your character progression matters and is very impactful as you go throughout the game meaning the journey is extremely important but the end game is just as important as there's multiple pve and pvp game modes of dungeons raids arena and world pvp that you can go through for gear progression the harder the content the better gear you attain wrath classic is the perfect blend between old school mmos and the modern day mmos all wrapped into a complete package where it's going to be an enjoyable experience to many types of players in number one, Ashes of Creation is a sand park MMORPG considered by many to be the next one up to save the genre from the dark state it currently resides in. Initially, this game was set out to be released in 2020, but with the you know what and issues residing within the game, it was delayed to late 2022 to 2023. As the head honcho developing the game, Steven Sheriff is a multi-million entrepreneur who is a me MMO mega fan who feels MMOs nowadays suck and he can fix it. The communication between the developers of the game and the community has been extremely exceptional, with devs taking the feedback and dictating whether or not it is valid and implementing them into the game. This game's graphics engine is Unreal Engine 5, meaning it's going to look absolutely insane whenever it comes out. The world itself is vast and wide. The unique aspect of Ashes Creation is that it's dynamic and reactive to the player's activity. Every server will be completely different, as the content that's unlocked is based on what the players are doing which is called the node system the world map is split into different sections where areas of player activity will start to evolve and level the zone up changing based on the type of race majority of the players are where random cities towns dungeons and bosses will start appearing nodes can also be de-leveled by destroying them in world pvp which is its own comprehensive system this will allow adjacent nodes to grow and reach their maximum potential no mmo has ever done this before the most unique aspect about this game is the adaptability of all types of content this also includes pve where your performance changes how a dungeon or raid or open world bosses difficulty operates Lastly, the combat is tap targeting slash action targeting. Very similar to games like Guild Wars 2, the current animations are very crisp and minimal with lots of big damage numbers. There are also 64 different classes, 8 ones you can pick and a secondary one that creates your overall class, making this game very detailed. If you're looking for that next big MMO that has the potential to be the best in the entire genre, Ashes of Creation may be the one you're looking for. 
That is my top 10 list of the next upcoming MMOs. If you're new, hit that red big subscribe button. It does help me immensely and it's free. And like and comment down below which MMO you're most excited for. For the algo, it helps a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.